and let me be very clear to everybody, I am going back and doing the lab work, because the lab work is 100% worth it. Like, it is worth it, people. I just, I'm working full-time, and I happen to get the job in between it. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. My name is Josh Matacor. I'm a cybersecurity YouTuber and CyberEng owner, and we have Michael here. Um, he is a CyberEng member, and he did a bunch of stuff and ended up uh, landing a nice job in cybersecurity, and he agreed to, like, come on and talk to us about his journey. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, thank you. If you don't mind, do you want to do a brief introduction of yourself and kind of tell me, tell us what you're doing before you decided to get into IT and cybersecurity? Yeah, super short story. Long story short, <laughs> I worked in bartending, jumped into Verizon for a long time. I did business management, leadership, so kind of worked in a little bit of tech. Ended up having the opportunity to leave, went back to school, and then kind of just slipped into a contract job and that propelled me into what I did here about a two year range after leaving Verizon. But the crazy part is I worked for Verizon for almost 10 years. So oh wow, was a, what were you doing for Verizon? It's funny, I, honestly I just came in, somebody walked into my job one day and was like, hey, well, you should do this, and it was sales. So I did sales and Damn. I did really, really well at it. So I was very proud of that job, but I hit like a point where after like management and working in business, sales and operations and doing risk with Verizon, I just, I wanted something more tech lined, something more, you know, skill based that I thought. And so for me, I kind of wanted out. So gotcha, I took gotcha. a really big risk. Did you, did you go straight from Verizon to your current cyber job or did you have like a, a different I, like IT job before then? No, I didn't have a different IT job then, but I was training. So Verizon paid for school. So like I took like the free Splunk training back when I was at Verizon. I started taking college classes and I was always into tech. You know, I was a kid. I was one of those people rebuilding a computer at a young age. So I, I kind of knew like what I was doing, but I didn't have like gotcha, official gotcha. training and I had no actual job training that was tech. But I mean, at Verizon, okay. I like understood M to M and smaller stuff. I wasn't large scale. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Cool. And then what's the, the new job you got, like the title and stuff? And like, what do you, do you know what you're going to be doing it? Yeah. So it's risk management specialist. Mm. So far as the, I just got the offer literally last week and signed it. So I haven't had a huge conversation with the manager yet, but he was a amazing person. Great to talk to. So a lot of it's going to be coming in and doing, I know they're about to get their annual risk assessment from the government, it's about to happen. So I'm gonna kind of get thrown into the fire with them to help on that, but it's cross team functionality. So I think the big thing for me was I have that experience where I was a leader in Verizon. So I had a lot of employees. Mm -hmm. So I know how to work with like cross teams. So I think my tech experience and that ability to work with people and lead and very people friendly was like a big deal for them. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I was going to say being in sales for a long time, like really, it really helps more than people think it does, especially if you do a good job. It's like a lot of transferable skills. I feel like. Yeah. I've had actually funny is like I was in discord groups and I've had people like tell me to take that experience out when I was applying for jobs. And I'm really glad I didn't really? listen to them. <laughs> I shortened it severely, but I didn't listen to exactly what they said. I don't know why they would tell you to like remove it. Sales, to, in my opinion, sales is like really hard to, it's hard to do well. And for me, anyway, I guess it depends on the personality type, but you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I kept more of the management side than I did the sales side because I wanted to show that like, hey, I can work with different types of teams. I did, it's been a long time, so I can't remember the term, but there's like a term for working with people that you don't actually have control over. Oh, like I can't make yeah. somebody do it, but I can be like, you should do this. Yeah, yeah, that's like, I have this, kind of job i was like a program manager you don't have I, I forget what it's called you can't make you have to like build rapport and like get mm -hmm. them to do something but you can't you know make them to do it you know yeah i was just talking to the current manager that i'm taking the job with he was saying the same thing he was working with like the engineer department hey why aren't we doing it this way and he was talking to me about like i don't want to give too much of a company but it was a manpower versus cost mm -hmm. issue and it's just kind of relating so that's something i've dealt with before gotcha where that human element where they like they know what's not working and they don't need you to tell you it's not working. They want to see how can we be a speaking, how can I speak for you to higher ups to make the get done what you need. Gotcha. Yeah, that's like really important. That's like an important theme in giving advice, like being able to translate stuff to senior leadership, you know? Absolutely. And when I worked at Verizon, I worked with a lot of like directors and enterprise level people. So I'm very aware of what it's like to speak to somebody that maybe would scare the average person. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Definitely it takes some time to get used to. Absolutely. Yeah, but so for that job that you got, do you remember how many jobs you had to apply to before you finally got the interview where you got hired? Well, let me pull out my tracker here and right now I'm kidding. <laughs> I actually kept an inbox where I had like jobs applied and jobs denied. It's long. Like, I could scroll through it. I'm telling you, it was a long time. So I worked for Verizon for I think exactly about eight 
and a half years. I did school for, I got an entire associate's degree in one year flat. I got a job before I graduated my associate's degree. I worked that job for five months and got a new job that I just left. So ideally, we're over 100. It was definitely over 100. But okay. I want to like set the message too. I did the thing that the internet tells you because you'll see it everywhere. It's like you just need to mass apply. And what I learned is it's not always about the quality. It was the quantity of my resumes because I go back. I wasted so much time sending out bad resumes. Oh, the quality of your resume is is yeah. really important. Okay, yeah, I think I think so too. And I think quick apply, like that quick apply button, I don't think that works as well as some people think it does. No, it doesn't. And I've met a lot of people in the field and they'll like say, hey, I've applied to like 100 jobs in the last two weeks. And it's like, how many of the team members did you reach out to via LinkedIn? Because like I would send a message to a recruiter and say, introduce myself, this is what I, who I am. If you have the time available, I'd love to speak. Or would you recommend somebody I should reach out to? I like took those extra steps and started applying to less jobs. But overall, I applied to well over probably 200 jobs. Okay, that's not that's not too bad. Yeah, I, I interviewed like maybe 20 people who went through like the IT course and I asked them kind of the same question. And it, it's about like between 200 and 300 jobs um, people would have to apply to at least to get into entry level IT. So I feel like 200 is, is not bad for in my opinion for cyber. That's like you must have had some decent, a decent resume and some decent applications. I think there's a stage too. It's like, I would get a lot of job offers, but where I was coming from, I don't think is always the average person spot for necessarily because I had like a good paying job previously. So there were mm -hmm. certain areas like I couldn't take necessarily an entry level job right away. I had to like really step backwards to go forward. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of picky on what I would accept. So I would get a good amount of interviews. I just, there was a lot I wasn't taking. Oh, really? Oh, like the IT and cyber interviews, you got a lot. Yeah, they were more IT. I wouldn't say they were cyber related. I get a lot of oh, okay. like um, help desk job interviews. That was very common, okay. but mm -hmm. it didn't really fit the narrative. So I probably made myself wait longer than I should have. Gotcha. Well, that's like kind of kind of good problem to have to be able to like turn down jobs. Yeah, but the first job I took was a contracting job, and I wouldn't call. It, <laughs> um, I'm not one to speak bad about previous companies or anything, but it was an eye opening. Mm -hmm. It was a basic help desk level job, but I was like help desk level one to three, oh, and it was. Uh, it was eye-opening. Really? Damn. Well, I guess uh, it's good experience so you know what to avoid. Well, have an idea of what to avoid in the future or something. I'm glad, honestly, that like that job wasn't the greatest job. I wouldn't rate it the highest, but I'm glad that I took it. I wouldn't do anything else. Like It taught me a lot of, okay, so here's the stuff that's not great. So mm. it built a little bit of character in my mind. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> that's a good way to think about it. And like people are always curious about like people's credentials and stuff, like what, what it takes to like get into the field. Do you have any like certs or anything like this? You said you had an associate's degree. Do you have like any anything else that you helped? Yeah, you um, so I did school when I was younger. When I got into Verizon, I just, I made so much, I stopped going to school. Then I went back after and I just got that associate's degree in about a year. I had the Network Plus, I got the Security Plus. Could get the CISA Plus, but I got it cheap and I just didn't want to pay for it. And I already had the job. So I was like, I'm not going to pay for it. Um, I yeah. have spent time. I bought like training books for the CISSP. Like that's in my process, but really just the network plus and the sec plus. I did a like multi DevOps cloud program. That was like two weeks where it taught me how to use some cloud platforms and like things of nature, like Terraform and just spinning okay. up like a website. So I like did some of that. I would join some like other webinars and classes, but I didn't just do tech stuff. I took like public speaking classes in between that as well. Okay, damn. That's I'm glad you bring that up because that that is significant anyway. That's like really good. So yeah, I wanted to kind of mix it. I didn't want to just flourish in tech, and you get burnt out. I think after a while, if you go like cert to cert to cert to cert, I don't know about everybody. Sometimes I'd get a little burnout because it was like study, cert, study, and like it got a lot. Gotcha. And then from the time you decided, I want to like, you know, work in cybersecurity. Do you, do you know, like on average, like how much time do you think you would spend per day, like doing something toward that goal, like studying or practicing speaking, etc.? Are we counting like listening to the daily cyber threats on like YouTube and stuff and everything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh sure. man. Weekdays. I won't say weekends because I try to free myself off my weekends to breathe a little bit. But weekdays, like two to four hours, I think four hours is pushing it. But there are probably some days because I would like you would post labs like you had like a AD lab and you had the Sentinel lab to make your own sock. Like I would do those on the side and then I'd be listening to daily cyber threat briefing. So like it would depend some days it'd be up to four hours, but I would say anywhere two to four hours. Gotcha. That, that sounds about right. Like when I'm trying to like study and go hard, I notice if I try to like go more than four hours, I get a lot of diminishing return. Like I'm really tired and it's hard to like absorb them. But that's really good. Yeah, I like to ask people in interviews like this kind of stuff 
because people get like a misconception like you just like go through the side range or you get network plus and then people like attribute your like job to that but actually you're doing like a lot of stuff right many hours like per day and you're conscious about your like efforts and stuff so i just want to give people the idea you're doing a lot so it that's kind of what it takes in my opinion to you know break into cyber so like good work on those i appreciate that yeah i think there's definitely other people i've seen that i just feel like they're and it's funny because like I, you say that and i feel like some people do so much more than me and it's wild mm-hmm. and it almost doesn't feel like i do enough sometimes so i like to tell people don't get down on yourself you're doing the thing you need to do yeah and like the the people who end up hiring you like all the employers they care about like different stuff right one person could care like really a lot about how you speak another person can care a lot about degree another person cares about certs it's like hard to know you know so if you you know make a nice package of yourself that kind of increases your chances and i think that's good what you're doing like working on speaking and stuff too because that is like it's something right absolutely i mean i've had to do that too in my previous role too so we had like toastmasters where the company give you time off to join toastmasters i'm not saying i did that but right. they would let people do that nice i was legit like considering to join toastmasters i was like this is before youtube i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna climb corporate ladder and become a CISO. i'm gonna like do toastmasters and i, I was going to and then the pandemic happened and then i just end up doing youtube <laughs> instead hey i mean i think this is brave and i appreciate you i didn't say it oh, earlier but i appreciate you i'm sure a lot of people do so thank you for doing the kind of stuff that you're doing oh it's no problem i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate yeah, you absolutely. saying that cool and then are you allowed to talk about you don't have to say like exact number or anything but are you allowed to give a salary range and if you had to negotiate for those at all trying to i was thinking like how to say this without saying it everything because i figured you're gonna ask i've definitely like i looked up the averages i got the higher of the average but i live in a more expensive area so i'm in northern california so i kind of i expected that i love the current roles i have now but i do feel like i'm like exacerbatedly underpaid (laughs) for what i'm doing now so i feel like i got a much more fair market but when i average it out it's closer to the six figure range okay oh it's pretty good for the first cyber job Damn. Yeah. Well, the job I have now, technically, I do a lot of cybersecurity. We're actually labeled as uh, is it system security officers, SSO. I can't think of the actual oh, yeah. title, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the job doesn't recognize us that, but the military side does. It's kind of weird. So I do a lot of cybersecurity now. I just do IT and cybersecurity now. There was no generalization. So the risk job is specifically risk, which will be nice. But yeah, okay. um, very good pay, to be honest. I'm very excited. Finally. Cool. I'm happy to hear that. And for people like watching, like you went through the cyber range and stuff, but I actually like don't know like how much you did in there, if anything. Like, did you did you did you do a lot of stuff in there? Like, how's your experience inside of there? So this is where I feel bad. So I joined it, but I got the job <laughs> offer like pretty quick into joining it. That's so funny. <laughs> so I didn't even get a chance to like delve into the labs too much. Um, literally, when I get paid again, I'm going to rejoin and start doing the labs because I want to get like the full value out of it. But okay. honestly, when I say that, I want to retract that statement full value because I feel like I got ridiculous value out of just the networking aspect. Like okay. reading other people's experiences was probably the most valuable part for me. And like actually okay. hearing that. Um, and for me, I get like a lot of imposter syndrome to answer somebody's question on something small. It feels mm-hmm. good because it's like, I don't know that I feel like I should be answering this question, but I do know the answer to the question being asked. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. And it's easier to do that on a chat for me than it is to like do it in front of somebody because then you start to get like, oh, you shouldn't be asking me this. Gotcha. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't expect you to say that. I, I realized like there is like a big network aspect to that because there's a lot of people in, in there in the community and people who are like, you know, smarter than me. So it's I'm glad to like hear you say that. Like the community yeah. aspect is good. And let me be nice. very clear to everybody. I am going back and doing the lab work because lab work is 100% worth it. Like it is worth it, people. I just, I'm working full time and I happen to get the job in between it. <laughs> and I'm studying, I'm still in school. Okay, oh, are you in WGU? Yeah, um, I literally did, a, I knocked out two classes in two weeks. I have one more class and go straight in. Nice, that's, that's pretty good. What program are you doing? The, is it, I always forget the full name. It's the Accelerated Bachelor's and Master's. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know this one. And I have a uh, coworker of mine that's doing it too. And I work uh, 4 p.m. to midnight, so I do not work regular hours. Okay. Oh, why is it like that? Is it like, are you doing like some incident response type stuff or is it just like a weird shift? So my current role that I just put the two weeks in, it's labeled as a technical support specialist, but I am a sysadmin and security officer essentially for the Air Force and Army. Oh, dope. Damn. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. There's like a group of six of us and we do a lot of different stuff. I've done back end like developing a web server. I do mass patching, server outages. I deal with the military constantly. So we have to cover that 24 seven. So I do the midday shift and that okay. was not for me. I am not a night person. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Are, are you a prior service? No, I'm not actually. Oh, wow. I'm like one and of then... the only people that's not prior military. That's funny. And then everyone around you probably is like, do, uh, do they get confused, like how to address you? Like they don't know if you're like a prior. I guess that should be specific. My company is a Sacramento based company. We're uh, contracted for the Air Force and Army. So it's a oh, contractor okay. company. But a lot of my team is previous military. I'm like one of the only few that has never been in the military. Now, military okay. family, though. So I'm familiar. It's not like out of the blue for me. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's cool. That's cool. Damn. I guess two, well, maybe one final question. Like the final question, as somebody who like worked on that transition from a non-related field, like made your way into tech and cybersecurity eventually, like what advice uh, would you give people watching who might want to follow in your footsteps? You know, uh, to be kind of lame, two words, commitment and preparation. Mm -hmm. So commit to it. And it that's the part that took me the longest was honestly just committing. And I, it's honestly just doing, just starting it. Just do something small, listen to somebody, talk to somebody about it, but um, it's being prepared. So, and what I mean by that is kind of laying out like a guideline, like using somebody like you to watch the videos and see what a guideline looks like and trust like what other people have done. It does work. There's a reason it's out there and they're trying to help. Like you're out here trying to show people, you know, it's not necessarily the same stepping stones for every single person, but it's a pretty general pathway of how you're going to get there and trust people and don't be afraid to ask questions. Cool. That's really good advice, especially the part where you say kind of see what other people have done because you can you can look at like a bunch of people and there will be like some common denominator about like was it commitment and execution and planning like all them all those people like do those things really well. That's a really good point. No, absolutely. And uh, don't give up on yourself. You know, I mean, I've had a couple moments where I felt like I didn't belong. And then I was like, I can do this. Yeah. I, I know what you mean by this. I have this feeling sometimes like when I'm making something, I want to, I'm like, I can't do this. It takes too long and too much energy, but like surprise, if you keep like working on it, even slowly, like it will, you'll get what you're after, like eventually. So I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. Thanks so much for doing the interview. We really appreciate it for sure. It's going to help a lot of people. So yeah, thanks again. And absolutely. I appreciate you. And I'm sure everybody does. Thank you for doing this. Thank you.